Hey guys, Mike here. So oh boy, what a bounce back on Friday. Shocker, shocker. And in, in this video, what I'm going to do is talk about one, why I actually believe that sell-off might have actually happened Thursday from a, you know, whether market maker's perspective, options market's perspective, and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about on that, as well as we're going to start off right off the bat just talking about what's going on next week, or this week, excuse me, because it's going to be a busy, busy week. And what I mean, you'll see on the calendar what's happening, and also we have earnings kicking off, some major earnings already happening again. It seems like we just went through earnings, right? And then we'll go into the chart, and I'll show you a lot of people probably Thursday started trying to front run. Oh, this is going to be a massive sell off, right? And they got smoked on Friday, but I'll show you what you're looking for. Okay. As well as some charts uh, that are really going to be the key to that. If we're actually going to see more weakness as this data rolls out next week. And hopefully what you did get to see is Friday. Let me just say, for those who don't know, the fed speak, remember I told you news, fed speak, all that stuff. It's just an excuse for the market to move it where it wants to move it. Okay. You can take it any way it wants to, and just to make an excuse for the narrative of where it's going to go. Again, it's all liquidity grabs. And what I mean by that, you saw Friday or Thursday, fed speakers were hawkish, all this crazy mess. Oh my God, it's not going to be any rate cuts. You know, we had jobs data coming out all smoking hot. Bam. We got to sell off. Oh my God, it's terrible. You no know, rate cuts. Friday, what happened? Jobs data was super hot. The unemployment rate actually dropped. I'm going to get into that more on Monday because I don't want to drag the setting up the week video and show you some pretty crazy stuff on jobs data. And so it came in super hot, right, which is not good. Why would you cut rates if unemployment rate is dropping? And then the Fed uh, speakers who came out that morning, same thing, right? Don't, like one of them said, you know, it, we'd be better off just waiting to cut versus cutting too early and losing inflation. And we've, we've lost inflation. Whereas it's actually going sideways. or going back up. So we lost our progress. All this stuff. Yet the market roared, right? The QQQs were up like 1.8% at one point in time, okay? And so, again, they use it for what they use it for. And I'll show you in the chart what I'm talking about. Now, I did go ahead and I took the vote for you guys on the Patreon group, all the members, you guys in the comments. And dark did win out 60 to 40 percent, and I'm gonna make some adjustments. Because again, I was a light guy too, but I'm a firm believer in the majority actually does win an election. And so, you know, look, I will make adjustments to the charts the best I can. Let me know in the comments what you want to see because I was a light guy too. But I think I'm making adjustments to where you actually be able to see it, and it makes a little more sense. Okay, so we'll adjust as we need to. Now, looking at earnings right off the bat, like Delta is the really big ones that come out Wednesday. Travel stocks have been roaring. Right, you'll get CarMax because man, cars. Don't get me started on cars. Fast and all, love that. But then, really, the big thing is Friday. That's what I want you to see. All the big banks: J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, City. All these big financial groups. So that's going to be a big one and a big setup. We'll go over J.P.'s chart in just a second. I'll show you why. Economic calendar. You have a lot of red folder news, but not on Monday. Tuesday is going to be an easy one too. Okay, so you're not going to have some crazy stuff coming out. You'll have you know maybe some Fed speakers here or there. But Wednesday, this is the big one. Core inflation, month over month, year over year, CPI headline, right? Inflation rate month over month, which you can see on the yearly, they actually expect that to go up. On the monthly, they expect it to drop, right? And so then a bunch of old uh, data coming out, and then you'll have the 20-year bond, 20-year note auction, then you'll have a 20-year note auction and the FOMC minutes coming out. So expect volatility like crazy on Wednesday and expect it Thursday too because you'll have jobless claims coming out. Core PPI month over month, year over year. They're actually expecting an increase in year over year on almost all of these, right? Headline PPI month over month, year over year. They expect the headline PPI year over year to go from 1.6 to 2.3. So the bar is super low, right? More Fed presidents. Then you have a 30-year bond auction at 1 o'clock. Then Friday, really nothing to speak of. Michigan Consumer Sentiment, some Fed speakers. So that's where we're at on that. Now, why did the sell-off happen? on Thursday. And before we continue guys, please hit that thumbs up and thank by hitting the subscribe button if you like this kind of content, do daily updates and Saturday videos answering any questions you have. Appreciate your support. So we know Fed speakers come out super hawkish. Oh my God, rate cuts. One reason I really believe it came out though or it sold off like this because we were getting ready to break this high right here, right? And so what's up above that? 530. It was only 1.3% away from going to 530, right? And you think, well, what's 530? Well, when you look over, what's Friday? Weekly options expiration. Look over here at this chart right here, which I post every day. You can see, you see that 530, the calls, the biggest spike? That's the biggest spike. So all those calls, you know, that's that's a big deal for the options market. It's like, ooh, if we go up there, we don't want to do that, do we? Because remember, max pain was lower than that. So 
Great reason to sell off, right? So that's a guess of mine. Let me know what you think about that. Now, other things here. Look at SPX, S&P, what it do? Major sell off, right? Got back up to that weekly expected move. Remember the weekly expected move? I think indexes are really more accurate on this, but they end up ending inside that range about 60% of the time. And as of yesterday, you probably didn't think it was gonna happen, but it did, right? But the other thing is when you're looking at this chart, you always gotta ask yourself this. What makes more sense to keep dropping after you just broke some major ranges? Because when you look on this, you know, I was talking about, well, where's the next big level, right? It would be the prior month's low, okay? But the prior month's low in SPX was way down, all right? On the NASDAQ, it wasn't. But on here, it was. And SPY has been the stronger of the two, right? And so, again, when you look over to the left, that's what I'm talking about. Let me span this out over here. There's, so it's, it's like way down there to try to get to that. Or head back up, right, and start mitigating those enormous fair value gaps or imbalances, right, from buyers and sellers. Makes more sense to go up, right? And so, and at one point in time, did you think it was going to be a V-shaped recovery? Because I was looking at charts, I'm like, is this really going to V-shaped recovery? Because we've done this in the past, right? And so again, it makes more sense to move back up, but we do not go back up and break it higher or anything like that. We still have fair value gaps and bounces above us and stuff. But what you're really looking for when you're looking at this and people are trying to front run going, oh man, I'm going to go ahead and front run because we're going to go way down. We're going to break prior months low and everything else. Well, you can see we, we've kind of been in a range, right? If you look to the left, to the right, in a little shaded area, we bounced there multiple times and stuff. But when you look in the hourly, what do we have here? You got a lower high forming right there. And on top of that, there's a low and there's a lower low, right? So in the hourly, you're like, oh, that's a downward channel. Okay, gotcha, right? But when we move over, we'll go over to the daily right here. Look at the daily figure time frame. And what do you see? There's a lower high, right? So we got high, low, high, low, came back up. Now the question is, are we going to end up right forming a lower high another lower high okay and that you know obviously people say market structure shift change of character all this fun stuff but that's what you're looking at okay to see if that's going to happen and we're going to go right down and break thursday's low all right you look at nvidia again this is this stock other stocks going to be needed for this to happen right because they make such a they have such a big weight but you saw this support held right so you don't have a support resistance flip this is what you want to see if, if the more downside is going to happen. You want to see support turn into resistance, get rejected, break whatever low it sets right there. And then you know, you're like, oh boy, we might be in for some hurt, right? Like that's when you really know. Because if you're, if you're shorting before it even breaks that, you're definitely front running this crap. But you want to wait for confirmation because, you know, obviously this is what, I think this is burning shorts more than any single stock out there. It used to be Tesla, now it's NVIDIA. AMD is the same way. What are we talk about? This thing right here comes down. Breaks the uh, year to anchor view walk was great, but what it do? It come right into support. I think it was nine times I counted. It bounced off or around this level in this range right here. And support is not just a line. It is a range. Okay. Remember that. And so when you look at that, it bounced. Shocker. It was up 3%, 3 to 4%, I think today, but it didn't get back above, right? The level here, it didn't get back above that year to anchor view walk at all, right? So what you'd like to see if you want this thing to go down farther, is it come up? challenge that what was support turn it into resistance then break the level which is to the left of support right and then turn that into resistance and then you know you got some downside to come okay and you're gonna be getting obviously maybe even go down that shaded area between like 145 155 down there but again we have to wait and see if that's going to happen you have to be patient with it okay and so a lot of people were not and they got smoked right now you know my know tesla took a dump right in pre-market tesla offers steep discounts on F suvs piling up in inventory no surprise there and that's why you got this drop down but once again some funny stuff happened with tesla okay because tesla is just the bearer of bad news it seems right so it broke that trend line got right back above that trend line in the descending channel but when you look and you go, wait a minute, that is a big, big dump right there. I mean, we're talking about a large cap stock dumping 5% in a matter of, I think it took 20 minutes to dump. And what happened was this news hit from uh, Reuters and it said, Tesla reportedly cancels plans to make low cost vehicle, but immediately Elon Musk, or I shouldn't say immediately, 25 minutes later, Elon Musk responds and says they're lying. And so you get to see a large cap stock do i think it was like a 10 or 12 percent swing in a matter of 30 minutes which is nuts by the way but you see that huge green candle that's what that was okay at the end of the day though what happened here you got a double bottom there triple bottom so you got three points now you've hit right here on this line so that is definitely trying to be turned into support and what are we in right back in that range we just talked about on thursday okay 
Again, for this one to confirm, you want to see it break down below that, which is 160.43, I believe it is. Retest and get rejected, okay? Maybe it just falls straight through. That does happen. Now, Apple, and this, you're going to see this on Apple, for example. Apple, what do you got here? So this is a support resistance flip, right? Came down, came up, got rejected, and you immediately sell a big sell-off when that happens. Because it triggers. When that happens, it really does trigger sellers, sellers to come in and shorts to really start coming in. But what's it doing? It's coming that down to another support level and it's trying to bounce, okay? And so this is what you got to watch because if that level breaks, yeah, I think you're really going to see Apple and some major, major hurt. And again, when you look at this, I mean, really, what's it doing is have a falling wedge, right? So it could break up. And that's the, that's the key. So watch this. Don't just, I'm going to front run, do what I want to do. If you're already in the short and you're, you're having money, that's great. But right here, you got to figure, are short's going to start to cover or not? And if you see a big move up in Apple, people are short in Apple covered. That's what happened. All right. But if that level breaks, oh boy. Now, JP Morgan reports Friday, biggest bank out there, right? This is what you're going to see. When it comes back down to this trend line, which is held since November, does it break? And earnings are going to tell us. And if that breaks, watch out for the rest of the banks, okay? Walt Disney, we talked about, got the bounce at 117. We're going to see if this is going to hold. Again, big move up already uh, from like two months ago. But again, it was down about you know 6% right there. And it has support levels right below, very close, okay? 115, 112, 90. Those are still support levels. But again, that was a big one. In phase, got the big bounce, big rejection. And this one's big on rate cuts. When it talks about rate cuts, this thing goes to the moon. When they talk about taking rate cuts off, it just absolutely flies down. It's sitting right on that trend line again. So put in the comments, do we get another bounce? And the reason why you need a bounce on this one, to bring up the volume profile, that's why. You got that big volume gap. And this thing moves fast, right? It was down 6 7% today on a green day in the market. So you're looking at 98 possibility if it breaks right there. So just keep that in mind. Shopify, you know, maybe this is a head and shoulders playing out, right? I mean, you look at that, it looks like one to me. And again, this one was slightly green, but it's been struggling. And this goes back, you know, I'll, I'll draw a neckline here, ugly neckline right here, uh, about right there. So, you know, we'll see if that breaks or not. But the big thing about this one is what we talked about was that MACD, right? You need the MACD on the daily to cross up, fully cross up that zero line. And that did not happen. It was a fake out. It came up. The signal line did not come over and boom, it rolled right back over. So, you know, this one is a momentum stock and it needs momentum. All right. Palantir, this is another one. I'm telling you right now, I know people for a fact are sitting here going, I'm waiting to short this thing. They might, and some people I know are already in it, but they see this fair value gap is coming up into. And if you look, we'll go to the left right here. Not only is a fair value gap, it's coming up into what was, was support, now resistance with that trend line right there, but also you got an inverted, inverted fit. But also you have an inverted fair value gap there as well, which can act as resistance. So this one needs to push. So if you're a big pound holder and you want to go higher, it needs to push through that because that's a lot of confluence for that short and for that head and shoulders to actually play out for people who don't know what I'm talking about. You look to the left, there's your left shoulder, there's your head, and there's your right shoulder. And so this can still play out to the downside. Again, a lot, all the stuff, these head and shoulders, all these formations, for them to carry out, you're going to have to have terrible inflation data next week, FOMC minutes, all this stuff is going to have to come out and, and it's be bad to push the market down, right? Because how many times we've seen this, this is what I'm talking about. Anytime we try to push rate cuts, if you didn't see the Saturday video, go watch it. I talked about it. You know, what is the market? It's like a little baby, right? When a baby has a lollipop in their mouth, they're happy as can be. Rate cuts are, you know, are pushing rate cuts back off and taking, you know, having less rate cuts this year, right? That's the liquidity. That, what, what it's doing now is having a you know a temper tantrum or a taper tantrum. Yeah, taper tantrum. No, temper tantrum, right? So for a baby, I'm thinking a taper tantrum for the, the Fed's um, balance sheet. But you know, you pull the lollipop out. What's the baby do? Or the young kid, they go, Wah! right? And that's what it does. Every time you see them, we pushed it from December to March. Now March to June. Now June to maybe July. Every time they go, Wah! and so they pull that lollipop out. And so now. Yeah, see if they're gonna put the lollipop pop back in next week with the FOMC minutes, which shouldn't be a surprise or anything. And maybe CPI does come in better than expected. That's really the big thing, right? And I think there's a lot of what you're seeing, like these mega stocks just sitting there on major support levels, right? Going, oh, we might break, we might not. Ooh, I don't know. Just waiting to see what that's gonna come out. And you see the headline, I mean, the, the bar is low, right? The headline increases in year over year. So uh, they ain't got to hang the moon on these numbers, by the way. So, you know, just putting that out there to you. Let me, you can predict what you think CPI is going to do because they, they got month over month coming in lower, year over year coming in higher. Some of it's way higher. And so, 
Uh, that's going to be interesting to see. I mean, you got oil going up, silver, gold, you name it, copper. It's crazy. Like all the commodities are going up. So if CPI drops, I'm like, really? I guess, yeah, but the way they calculate it, remember, the way they calculate it, it's funky. All right. So anyway, hope you guys got something out of that. Again, you know, give any suggestions you want on the charts, let me know in the bottom and stuff. I'll try to make tweaks and stuff, even though it's kind of growing on me now. Um, and besides that, I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll talk a lot more about the jobs reports, the information I found, which is just, it's almost like mind blowing. But I like to put it out there anyway so you can make your own decision. So anyway, hope you guys have a great rest of your Sunday and I will see you tomorrow.